Hi. This is a bit of a weird one as it happens because it's actually far more interesting than it looks. Because on the one side of it, what you're looking at here is two beakers filled with uh, fluid. This one's sort of slightly dirty and this one is just water. Incidentally, I'm wearing Steve's lab coat and he's going to kill me when he finds out. <laughs> but there we go. Now, I've had this stuff lying around for quite a while. It's actually graphene in solution and that's what's in here. Now, I've left this for about three months just to make sure that the solution is stable. And when I've left it and come back to it, we've got this black coloured liquid that isn't separating out despite the fact it's been left on the shelf for three months. So it's fairly stable. There are other things in there beside the graphene, obviously. There's something in there to help keep it stable. It's just a surfactant. And this one is just ordinary tap water. Now, the theory is that when you put a bit of graphene into some water, what should happen is it should be uh, really good at transmitting heat. It should be an excellent fluid for um, thermal transfer. And so I decided to have a look at that. So I put roughly equal amounts of water in and equal amounts of graphene fluid into these two beakers and stuck on a little bit of paper and um, coloured it in. The reason I've done that is if I shine the infrared thermometer on that, I get a degree of reflection and in the water it'll just go straight through. So if I measure the temperature of the blue dot on both of them that are roughly at the same height, then I should get a reasonably fair test. Now, the first one we're going to try is the graphene in water. So if we measure that temperature, we're going to get 11.6. And all I'm going to do is turn this light on, leave it for a certain amount of time, set a stopwatch going, and see what happens over a period of a minute or two to the temperature in that water, in that um, fluid. Okay, so we turn that off. And it is 16 degrees and that took three and a half minutes to do it. Now let's try the water. Measure the temperature again. Set it going. See how long it takes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm a bit bored of that actually. So let's have a look on the board. Okay, so we have a quick look at those results so it makes some sense. This one is the graphene in water, and this one is just the ordinary tap water. Our graphene water started at 11.7 and rose it to 16, which is 4.3 uh, 4 degrees centigrade, and it took 3 minutes 39 seconds. Not tremendously quick, but uh, it absorbed 860 calories. Now, so compare that to the actual water, we raised that from 11.6 to 14.5 to 2.9 degrees. I got fed up of it after 17 minutes, so I just gave up. Uh, after 17 minutes, it means it absorbed um, 580 calories. Um, so if we were to raise that by the same number of degrees, we can work that out as being roughly 26 minutes to do that. So this took three and a half minutes to raise it 860 calories and this would take 26 minutes to do the same job. So the graphene in water is actually very very much quicker at absorbing that energy and of course it begs the question why? Now the theory is nanoparticles act differently. Now it being graphene is obviously very responsive to light so if I put light in it it's black it absorbs the light. Being a nanoparticle it can take that energy and transmit it back into the water very very quickly which apparently it does. So we've got this um, thermal transfer fluid that is actually much more efficient than just using plain old water. Now, that works really nicely with light, which is what you would expect it to do because um, the black is absorbing the light, you expect it. Now let's have a look at it when it's working with uh, direct heat. So we'll put it on a hot plate. Okay, so let's measure the start temperature of that, and that is 20.2. Uh, Pop it onto a hot plate, and we'll measure the temperature on the dot and see how long it takes it. Good God. That's 36 in 9 seconds. <laughs> 36 degrees centigrade in 9 seconds. Let's try the water. Let me measure that. We've got 18.7. Pop that on. See what it does in 9 seconds. I went up to 28 in 9 seconds. Oh, 
We'll give that a while to come back to it. There we go. 59 seconds to get the 32. So here's the results for the direct tran thermal transfer using the hot plate. So using the hot plate, we started the fluid off at 20.2 and we raised it um, to 36 degrees in 9 seconds, which was raising it by 15.8 degrees. In the just straightforward water, it began at 18.7. After 9 seconds, it had gone up to 28, so we'd raised it by 9.3 degrees. So you can see it's roughly twice as much with the graphene added than it is just a plain old water. It took about 59 seconds to raise it to 36 degrees, incidentally. Um, so it's obviously much more efficient at thermal transfer in this example as well, but it's not as striking as when we use the light. And it's kind of what ex you'd expect that really, because it being black and all and it absorbing the light, it's obviously that much more efficient at absorbing light than it is using direct thermal transfer. Okay, so why is it I think this is much more interesting than looking at a beaker of slightly dirty water being boiled? Well, it's something like seven times better at absorbing solar energy and transferring it to heat than um, this stuff here, water. So it's very much more efficient. It's stable, it's innocuous to the environment, it's just carbon uh, particles floating in water, so if you spill it everywhere, it's not going to harm anything. So it's going to make a big improvement, or it could make a big improvement, to thermocell efficiencies. Now, rice were working with um, copper nanoparticles in water to generate steam, so it would be another really good thing to do. You'd stick this in a closed system, actually, um, circulate it around, collect your heat, generate steam with it, and run a very efficient, say, solar sterling from it, something like that, just by using this. Now, it's not as remarkable in terms of the just pure thermal transfer that we saw, but it's still about twice as good as just plain old water. So I know people who would love to use something like this in, um, say, cooling uh, computers, cooling LEDs, streetlights, that kind of thing, because the efficiency of thermal transfer of this fluid is about twice that. So it's very useful fluid and very, very harmless. So I thought I would have a look at that because um, I'd been leaving this around and I thought that was all very interesting and I hope you did too. Anyway, thank you for watching.